Howdy folks, I'm the Roleplay Gamer, and I like to party. Welcome to the review. Today we're taking a very atmospheric look at Homeworld, Deserts of Karak. Deserts of Karak is the prequel to the cult classic RTS series, Homeworld. At its core, it remains a homeworld experience, but it does shake a few things up in a couple significant areas. But first up, let's start with the basics. Deserts of Karak comes with two factions, a story-driven campaign, online multiplayer, which includes ranked play, and a skirmish mode against the AI. However, there are only five maps available in multiplayer and skirmish. At least this was the case with the review build I received from Gearbox. I can only assume they're going to add more later, because they'd be mad not to, right? All the same, be wary just in case. Furthermore, each faction only has about 13 or 14 units each, which is substantially less than Homeworld 2, for example. Now, does this necessarily mean it's a shallow experience? Well, no, and I personally don't mind it. I personally really enjoy the game, but I can fully understand why some of you might be turned away by that. Now that I've gotten my initial disappointments out of the way, let's talk about the good stuff. As I said, it remains a homeworld experience, and what I mean by that is the atmosphere. No RTS, in fact, no game at all, can match the atmosphere of homeworld. The isolation and desperation, the sense that the units you're controlling have accepted their fate, the way they deliver their lines with such dry disinterest, it's like they know they can die any second, and that's fantastic. Alert. Sandstorm conditions in effect. Be advised, Gaussian combat patrols may be in the area. As we push forward, keep your eyes open. As you no doubt will have noticed, the biggest change with Deserts of Karak over the previous Homeworld games is it's not set in space. It's actually on the planet Karak. This is a 2D plane RTS, not a 3D. And in my opinion, it's a better game for it. The concept of a space-based RTS with full freedom of movement is certainly a compelling one, and trust me, there is no bigger fan of space battles than I. But space hasn't got any obstacles, no higher ground, no choke points, and for that reason, Homeworld Deserts of Karak with its 2D plane is a hell of a lot more fun for me to play. So how does Deserts of Karak work? You start off with your carrier which is your main mobile base. It's very much like the mothership from Homeworld 1 and 2, but it's a hell of a lot more useful. Not only does it build and research, but it's also a combat unit in its own right, and you can actually, in a way, customize its abilities on the fly using this power system they've added to the game. As you progress through the campaign or the research tree in skirmish mode, you gain power pips that you can apply to any system aboard your carrier at any time. Maybe your carrier is stuck behind enemy lines, taking a beating with no escort. Then put all your power pips into reactive armor, so it can take a little more damage. Maybe you'd like to use it in an offensive capacity. Then you can put all your power into weapons to increase the rate of fire and the amount of missiles it launches. You can also increase the range of your carrier's weapons, as well as its repairability. And of course, all these abilities are specific to each faction's carrier. Another great addition is the way the game handles aircraft. Instead of having to micromanage every fighter or squadron, they're all stored inside the carrier. So you queue up their construction as normal, up to a certain amount, because your carrier hasn't got infinite hangar space. From here, you can easily see on the UI how many aircraft of each type you have and their status. You launch them by pressing a hotkey for each aircraft type. You've got W for your strike craft, Q for your bombers, and U for your gunships. You mark on the map where you want to send them, and once they've run out of fuel or ammo, they automatically return to the carrier. Alternatively, by clicking on the carrier and pressing the Z key, you can pull them back prematurely to protect them from anti-air attacks. So the upshot of this is you still get to choose exactly how many aircraft of which type you want, you get full control of them, but there's a little bit of automation thrown in there too, so you never lose track of any aircraft. If you've sent them out to attack something and they don't return, then they're dead. 
And speaking of dead, units now have veterancy. Now I know this is a little bit of a controversial issue. Some people really like veterancy, some people don't. I'm personally a fan of it when it's done right. And I think here, it's done right. Your units gain veterancy as you would expect through combat. Now normally, your units just have a generic name. But when they gain veterancy, indicated by a few stripes next to their health bar, they actually become named. Now it's not really obvious, and it doesn't have any gameplay impact, but Jesus Christ does it add to the atmosphere. It's great to know that my veteran light assault vehicle is piloted by an officer Soban, for example. And speaking of small details that improve the experience, there's actually a lot to love here in the UI, and I'm talking specifically about the options you have in controlling your units. You've of course got your standard move and attack move, but now you can control drag around a group of enemy units and your selected units will attack the whole group. This saves you holding shift and clicking each unit in the group. It's totally a time saver and a lifesaver and I love it. Furthermore, any unit you have selected, when you right click on another unit, they automatically go into guard mode and they follow along in tight formation. Not only does it look fantastic and make moving units around as one really simple, but it also allows you to kind of create attack groups, depending on the units you have guarding and their range. In terms of ease of use and quality of life options, there is no better RTS on the market. And while we're on that subject, just what kind of RTS is this? If we were to make an arbitrary scale to indicate how fast paced an RTS was, where the fastest was StarCraft 2 and the slowest was Supreme Commander or Grey Goo, I would say Homeworld Deserts of Karak fits somewhere in the middle. Yes, it is probably a slower paced RTS and there is substantially less micro than pretty much any other RTS I've ever played. But it can also be really fast paced, but in a manageable way because it gives you the tools to play fast. An average 1v1 game against the AI usually takes me about 20 minutes depending on the game mode. Some are faster than others. If I do a 2v2 or more, then the game gets a hell of a lot quicker. We're talking anything from 10 to 15 minutes. There are two main game modes here for multiplayer and skirmish. We've got Artifact Retrieval and Annihilation. Artifact Retrieval has you using a specific unit to collect artifacts and move them to designated points on the map. The number of artifacts required for victory is adjustable before you start the game. Annihilation on the other hand is what you would expect. You either have to annihilate all your enemy's units or just their carrier or whichever one comes first. You can play all of these modes in the same match and in that case Again, it's whichever victory condition you accomplish first ends the game. Last in the gameplay category is the campaign. Of course, this is going to be a highlight of any homeworld game because, like I said before, the atmosphere is fantastic and the story is very compelling. It's your standard homeworldian slash Battlestar Galactica kind of thing, but it's really cool. You've got the ancestors of the Higarans looking for this ancient spacefaring technology that they believe is going to help them save their planet and end the war with the Gelsian, the other faction inhabiting Karak. Gameplay wise, it's exactly the kind of stuff you would expect from a Homeworld game. It's very reminiscent of Homeworld 1 and 2. You're taking your fleet from point A to point B, you get sidetracked along the way, people are attacking you, sometimes you have to hold and defend a position, and the units that you build in one mission are for the most part persistent and carry over to the next. Full disclosure though, I only got my review copy about two days before release, so I haven't had time to finish the campaign. If I had to guess, I'd say I'm about halfway through. Lastly, let's talk about presentation. The music is exactly what you'd expect from a homeworld game. It's that pseudo Middle Eastern stuck in the desert feel, which actually makes a hell of a lot more sense for this game than it did for Homeworld 2. Now, don't get me wrong, that's not me ragging on the soundtrack for Homeworld 2. It was fantastic, and it's actually some of my favorite music from any game or TV show. Try to tell me someone on the production team of the remake of Battlestar Galactica hadn't played Homeworld and used it as inspiration. Next, we've got graphics, and they're good enough. 
you know, from a distance it looks very nice in my opinion, but once you zoom in, yeah, the textures do look severely dated. The effects though, the uh, the gunfire and the explosions look fantastic. The only issue that, it's not an issue for me, but I feel like it would be for other people, just because of the desert setting, which totally makes sense for the story, so I'm not faulting them there. But unfortunately, as a result of the desert setting, it does tend to look kind of bland, and I think some people will take issue with that. So with all that said, ultimately, what are my thoughts? I think the 1v1 scene is a little bit lackluster, and I don't really see it taking off. However, 2v2 is orders of magnitude more fun, just because there's so much more going on, especially if you play Artifact Retrieval. It's just really intense, there's always something to do, and the quality of life improvements in the UI and controlling your units just make it so much more fun and easy to play. So, we know I like the game, but now we have to address the elephant in the room, and that's value for money. I just can't shake the feeling that there's just not enough content here. The core gameplay is absolutely solid, but it feels more like the basis for something that could have been so much more. As it stands, let's face it, do we really see multiplayer taking off for Homeworld Deserts of Karak? Probably not. This is going to draw people in for the campaign, maybe the skirmish mode. And yes, the campaign is good, with fantastic cutscenes, may I add. But once you're done with that, what reason is there to continue playing? I'm just spitballing here, but I would have personally loved to have seen kind of a wave-based survival mode. I mean, one of the major underlying themes of the Homeworld series is survival, so why not put us in the middle of a map with a set amount of resources each round, and we have to fight off and defend against wave upon wave of enemies. It's a resource management and defense game. That would have been so much fun, and I would have played the shit out of that. But instead, we've got this game with fantastic moment-to-moment -moment gameplay and mechanics draped in standard RTS fare, a campaign, multiplayer that's probably going to be dead in a few months, and a skirmish mode that, as far as I can tell, only has five maps. I really want to recommend this game to you, and as an independent human being who enjoys playing the game, yes, I can recommend it. But as a reviewer trying to be objective, no, not for 50 US dollars. I'm sorry. This was definitely a tough one. Gameplay wise, it's one of the best RTSs I've ever played. It's not going to be for everyone. StarCraft 2 fans aren't likely to find much to enjoy here, but for the rest of us, those people who like the offbeat RTS, who like the slower paced stuff, who don't revel in clicky clicky micro, this is the game for you, this is the game for me. But ultimately, it just feels like it's lacking in content. As a small side note, please keep in mind I didn't have a lot of time to play the game, take notes and record this review. So I know I will have missed something. To that end, I'll be putting any points that didn't make it into the video in the description below, so please check that if you're interested. Thank you very much for watching. Don't forget to gently caress that like button. It needs love like everything does. Be excellent to each other and I'll see you next time. Roleplay Gamer, out.